Hi, I'm Shaman. <laughs> we talking about it. I was going to talk. I said, Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Good for it. I'm Shaman. <laughs> Can I talk? She's Yolanda. <laughs> hey, guys. We are Shaman and Yolanda Harper, co-founders of Harper Therapy. Yeah, that. That. Here in the Tampa Bay area in Lutz, Florida. We are prepping. Yeah, we're getting ready for a hurricane. There's a little storm coming. So hopefully, hopefully it will be kind to us, Dorian, be kind. But um, we wanted to, before we lose power, <laughs> share, um, share some tips because this has been coming up quite a bit lately um, here in the office. We have a cool topic today. Yeah, yeah. What happens when your partner is having an affair, not at work, with work? Right, when... One, or really even both of them. Yeah. Both of the partners are workaholics. Impact of, of workaholism <clears throat> on your relationship. Right. Because, to be honest, it's not good for relationships. It's not, but it totally makes sense how we kind of get caught up in, um, like, losing ourselves in work and, and oh, making yeah. that more of um, a priority than it is. Can't, than it needs to be, than it should be. Right, because there's some things that back that up. I mean, one, it's it's our culture, right? Totally. I mean, we here in America love to work. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us, we get our value and worth um, from productivity, right? Right, you right. Know, well, think about it. When you meet someone, right. that's the first question. Like, what do you do? Right, and and you get, like, instant feedback from a lot of that, right? You're doing good. You get rewarded. Mm -hmm. You get money. You get accolades. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it kind of feeds that whole... It does. Hey, you're awesome. It does. Well, not only that, too, but I think also there's a, an element that we have in our jobs a lot, a skill set. We have right. some kind of training. We have uh, either formal education or certification or whatever it right. is. You're, you're geared toward it. Right. <clears throat> but we don't have that same opportunity to learn the skill sets uh, that impact our relationships in the same way that make us right. feel like we're confident. Right. You know? Right. So I think that plays into it. And then we spend a lot of time at work. Right. I was going to say that one a minute ago, but yeah, we yeah. do. We spend a, a, ha like half our time at work. Right. Right. <laughs> you and, and you form friendships and relationships there that right. again, you kind of um, have some positive feedback with. Right. And it, and that can mm -hmm. start, Really early in careers, as you're starting in a right. career, you might spend a little extra time trying to get a foot in the door, get a head up. Prove yourself. Up. Yeah, yeah. You know, all that good stuff. And a lot of times that pattern, that cycle can just continue and kind of get stuck. Right, it snowballs and snowballs and snowballs, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden now it's like this thing, a barrier in your relationship. Right, right. Yeah. So then what happens when, what does it look like? In a relationship, when one or both partners is um, kind of married to their work. Well, there's a lot of resentment. Yeah, so if it's one partner, um, that is like a breeding ground for resentment. It's like an affair. It really, it kind of is, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, because, that, you know, it's, it's time, energy, commitment, mm -hmm. you know, emotional energy, physical energy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if it's one partner who is um, super over-engaged in, in their job, the other partner is having to pick up the slack. Right, right. Having to do all that extra stuff at home and, mm -hmm. or, you know, like running the kids around, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's consequence to all that time being spent there. Yeah. Somebody else has to pick up all the other yeah. stuff in life. Right. And there can mm -hmm. be a feeling for that partner who is kind of spinning their wheels, picking up the slack, that they're only getting the crumbs of, you know, right. of their spouse. The leftovers. The leftovers. Right. Like, and, and that could be, I mean, work can be really depleting, so you could feel like there's very left, very little left right. for home. Right. And it's weird because we we tend to even put on, like, a better behavior at work than we do at totally. home in our relationships. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. we tend to because, you know... I think sometimes um, the feeling is that there are bigger consequences for not managing that behavior at work. Right. So then when it's like two people that are workaholics, you kind of end up with that situation where you're just kind of two ships. Yeah. Like I did that. That's, that's, 
that was awesome the way that that happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, um, yeah, and then it's like almost like your roommates or right. your siblings as opposed to partners, romantic partners. Right, because now all of a sudden both of you are giving your leftovers and your yeah. crumbs to... there's a, totally nothing left. There's there. really not a relationship. Yeah, well, I mean, it can... Yeah, I, I think it takes special people to navigate a relationship like that. Right, and right. again, that all of the, um, that pattern can be if both partners are business owners, entrepreneurs. Right. Um, you really have to be mindful of that because right, there's right. that that extra kind of drive that happens in those situations. Right, right. So that leads us to the question of how do you recover? Right, one or both How do you, partners. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you, you've got to be honest about the impact, right? You yeah. can quantify the impact. You can look at it and you could say, yeah. this is how it's affecting our lives. Right. This is how it's impacting the relationship right. and, and how it's damaging the relationship. And look, I mean, this can be quantifiable. Get out the calendar, mm -hmm. create a log. Get real about the number of hours that you're working, right. the number of nights, days, weekends, whatever, travel, business travel, time spent away from home and um, that relationship. Right. Here's the honest truth. Where we spend our time, where we spend our money right. is the greatest reflection of what we value. Right. It's what's important to us. Those. That's what's most, most important. So if your partner is saying... I don't feel like I matter. Right. And you look at your calendar and you're at work more than you're at home. Or if you're at home and you're answering <laughs> phone calls and emails right. and you, you know, know you're disengaged. Nights you're, and weekends and yeah, the you time might, you're not working mm -hmm, but you're you might, working. Right. You might be there physically, but you're right. not there mentally, emotionally, emotionally right. right? That's a clear indication um, that that's accurate. Right. And it, it's it's hard to see it in yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I, I like the idea of logging it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I mean, honestly, if where are we putting our time and our money and our effort is mm -hmm. our priorities. Mm -hmm. It is. Know? It is. And a lot of times we kind of fall into like, oh well, I have to. Otherwise, you know, economic times are uncertain. I might get laid off. And but again, that comes down to being really honest about you know where right. the priorities where the priorities are, are. and. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the biggest things you can probably do is put boundaries in place. Yeah, that's a hard one. So here's what I'm going to say about that. Without a doubt, boundaries are such a challenge. We need support oftentimes in identifying what the boundaries are. Right. So like, what is that even? You know, right. what is a boundary? Um, and then we definitely need some support in putting the boundaries in place and having some accountability to make sure that the new pattern sticks. Right. So if I say like, oh, okay, a boundary is that I'm not going to answer work uh, calls or emails in the evenings and on weekends, right? It takes some support to really put that into practice because we've gotten so used to doing it the other way. Right. No, that's that's true. I mean, we we've really blurred the lines between life balance and work balance we're always on right we're and always, we're always, always connected and people can always reach us and, and here's the here's the unfortunate fact of the matter our society and especially corporate culture right reinforces that right, right. so it, so it says like we own you we own all of your time right. you know right um here's here's a salary and for that you know you give us all of your time so it is helpful oftentimes to excuse me, have some professional support right. in that. And that's right. where we at Harper Therapy come into play. That's where we can help support. And having that hard conversation to say, hey, this is how this is impacting me and, and helping the partner really hear. Right, right. Because that's like a communication thing. Totally, totally. And then helping with the boundaries and helping with the accountability mm -hmm. and sticking with the boundaries. So... If you and your partner could use some support in communicating um, about these hard things, give us a call, 813-434-3639. Also keep in mind our upcoming communication, couples communication workshop. Right, September 21st, 21st. 10 a.m. <laughs> to 5 p.m. 
you can get more information on our website about that, hovertherapy.com forward slash couples workshop. Couples workshop. All right, guys, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. All right.